All right, tonight we'll make another from the shop segment. And this old case three bottom mold board. And this is the, the old tail wheel, which as you can see has definitely passed her expiration date. But believe it or not, it was still holding there. Well, the tube was at least, good old bias ply. And I was actually able to find a size on the size wall, or the side wall rather, and wherever the heck it is, there it is, 412. So I went to the old store and I bought this trailer tire, 12 inch trailer tire, and this is considered a 480 12. And so you would have thought it ended up being a little bit bigger, but it sure looks a size smaller to me, but I mean, maybe a guy could have got a 530 12 instead, but whatever. We're gonna roll with what we got. And I got a new tube for it. Of course, made in China. But anyway, so do a little quick tire mounting demonstration, I guess. I do pretty much all my own tire stuff. and So I, I got the old one off and I wire brushed the rim down and primed it and painted it. Try to keep the rust at bay a little bit. If you watch my other video, I fixed a valve stem hole and a rim. Done that a few times. But when you mount the tire on a rim, if you look at the rim, get out of here, dog. It's got a dip in the middle of her, like here. And the reason being is you cannot stretch a tire over the rim. You need to get, when you put it over here, you got to get one side down in this dip in order to get the other side to go around it. When you're spooning it, you don't stretch it. Quick side note, run over here. If you look at the old school split ring type rims, ah, there we go. You see they're completely flat. So since they're completely flat, the only way you could get a tire on and off is by having this split ring here that you remove. Now later, still when we were running open centers back in the early days when cars were made out of wood, they went to 22 fives. And this is a direct replacement open center for the old 1020 split types. And here's a split that doesn't have the ring on it anymore and you can see it's just perfectly flat, 20 inch. And the difference between a half size and an even size, like a 16 and a 16.5, or a 14 and a 14.5, or a 22 and a 22.5, is not actually the size, it's the angle of the bead. If you look at an even size rim, like this one here, this is a trailer rim, the, where the bead sets is a 90 degree angle. Same thing with these 20 inch split ring type, but on a half size, I think this is technically a 15 degree angle right here, but all half sizes run an angled bead and all even sizes run a flat bead. Okay, I got the camera set up. Need both hands. So first, we gotta get her on here. Got it lubed up. Now you can see what I got going where I got to get this bead over here and drop down into the groove before I can try it over this other side of the rim. Spoon in there. Ok, 
Okay. One side done. Now we got to put the tube in. Now, when tubes are new, especially with new tires, they're kind of grippy. And you don't want the tube to end up with a wrinkle inside the tire, because if it gets a wrinkle, it's going to pop. And I haven't seen, seen you know, specific tire talc in years, but baby powder is just as good. So you want to take your baby powder and spread her out on there, and it gets rid of all the tackiness of the rubber. So that way it's, it's a dry lube is what it is. So then the tube doesn't wrinkle up in there. And I mean, you don't want to use like tire lube for this because then, you know, your tire is full of moisture that's going to rust the rim. No bueno. And then all these older rims took a bigger size valve stem on the old tubes. And most of the tubes you find nowadays are the skinnier whatever they call it, the TR31 valve stems. You can get these bushings that fit. Now I dropped the darn thing. You can get these bushings and they, re they go on the valve stem and they reduce the hole size down for these smaller stems. I, I haven't found them at any kind of a big box store. I just went to one of the local tire shops and asked for half a dozen of them and the guy gave me eight of them for three bucks. But otherwise, if you don't use this, over time it'll crack right around the valve stem down here and start to kind of bubble out and eventually the stem breaks off so it's not as good as the old tubes with the heavy stem but it's what we got to work with nowadays okay now here we are with the tube all talked up and i put that bushing on there with a little bit of black rtv silicone around it to hopefully keep you know most of the water out but now we got to make sure the valve stem is facing the right way and then stuff this in. And when they put these tires on the shelf at the store and they stack them flat and then they sit that way for a while, they're really a pain because the beads settle together. The, the, the sidewalls kind of collapse in. And if you're trying to do it tubeless, they can really be a bear to get your beads to set up once they've been collapsed in like that. Now I got it stuffed in there and from the back side you can see the tube around the rim. You gotta get the get the tube worked over the outside bead of the rim. And now you gotta get the valve stem lined up and through that hole. And uh, I'll work on that. There it is right there off camera for a second. and. Get this bead lubed up to put back on okay now I got this on here and I put a quarter inch washer under the valve stem cap that way the valve stem can't fall back in the tire and I got the outer bead lubed up and you want to start away from the valve stem you want to get that side on first and then you want to work your way around to the valve stem whether you start at the six o'clock position like so or you can start you know at about nine and then go around whichever okay we're gonna start about there and then try to go around Now here again you can see like I was saying you don't stretch the tire you got to get this side down in the dip in order to get this other side over the lip. And now we just got one left right at the valve stem and now you can pull the stem out hold it with your needle nose Unscrew the cap. Hopefully you can see this. Take the washer off and then air it up.
and if a little air comes out around the valve stem at first you ain't got to worry about it it might just be air between the tube and the tire but obviously if it keeps coming out maybe you poked a hole in the tube and you got to take her back apart but I think we're sitting pretty good all right there we go looks mint better than it was good enough for what it is Now just a little thought I had when I mentioned the whole tire size being a 400 on the old tire and a 480 on the new tire and the 480 looks smaller than the 400. I wonder if this has something to do with back in the early days when we had cast iron pacifiers that were warmed up on the wood stove. They changed the way tires were sized. Like tractor rear tires what used to be known as an 1138 became a 12438. What used to be a 1238 became the 13638. I wonder if that's something to do with why that old tire was labeled as a 412 and it looked smaller than the new 48012. I don't know. Just a thought. Thanks for watching.